My name is Jeremy Andrzejkowski. I'm an editor and journalist at Rzeczpospolita Daily. A very warm welcome to everyone watching us at Rzeczpospolita TV. And today we'll talk about some main challenges connected with introducing a 5G network. My guest today is Tero Pesonen, Chairman, Critical Communications Broadband Group at TCCA and the Vice Chairman of the Executive Board of TCCA. Hello. Hello, nice to be here. Thank you for being with us. And let me say a few words about uh, TCCA. As uh, the association tells about uh, itself, it leads the global development and promotion of standardized critical communications solutions for professional users, provides uh, the forum for governments, regulators, manufacturers, operators, and users for any and every stakeholder in the critical communications sector to discuss, debate, deliver and evolve the market for the benefits of all. Uh, TCCA also influence key decision makers uh, on the need and for benefits of open and competitive markets and lobby for the spectrum required for critical communications to operate effectively. And uh, we indeed have, uh, may I say, a vast spectrum of question marks connected with introducing the 5G, especially in terms of critical communications solutions. And uh, as we all know, uh, the 5G is the right direction. The question is how to get there and get there safely. Uh, Tero, what are the world trends regarding Tetra and migration towards hybrid networks involving LTE and 5G? Well, uh, if we look at the, the, uh, the global situation, those parties that are quite happy with critical voice communication and just messaging, they're just fine with, with Tetra. That's, that's clear. But those that are looking forward to move into uh, information-centric operations, utilizing data and, and convergence of technologies, they have a need for, for something more than the narrowband technologies can offer. And that's the, obviously the driver for, for broadband. Uh, here in Europe, most of all, and, and more specifically, obviously, with the nationwide public safety networks, if we pick one of the critical communication sectors. And how do you define a hybrid network in this context? Well, uh, I think hybrid network, uh, we could, could consider it in, as, the, as the transition path from, from Tetra to broadband technologies, 3GPP, uh, standardized or 4G, 5G technologies, and the, the ways how these technologies are used in parallel as uh, shifting from one network to another overnight would be a, a quite a demanding task for anyone to execute. And what are models that we can see here, like uh, public procurement rather, not nationalization of resources? Well, uh, if we th start thinking of the, of the modules, uh, models there, uh, there are quite different approaches. The main uh, differentiating factors here, I would say, are one is spectrum, one is the service model, and one is then the, the, the transition model. On the spectrum side, side in a nation, this really depends from a nation to nation. So there isn't really one size fits all answer. So in some nation, there, there is dedicated spectrum available, uh, dedicated assigned spectrum. Uh, in other, other nations, only commercial commercial spectrum can be utilized. So that gives already uh, a direction on which options are available. On the, on the service model, again, some countries are, are uh, looking at the dedicated network in the similar way as the narrowband networks have been. In some, some nations, nations uh, uh, multiple operator core network, MOCN, uh, or mobile virtual network operator MV MVNO model is more, 
more of a preference. And in some countries, it's, it's simply an outsourced uh, commercial service. And then on the transition side, side uh, also, uh, say, a bunch of countries that have the Tetra network or a similar network running currently, they have a major responsibility on taking care of the, the transition of existing users. Whereas in some, some countries, the new network, the broadband network, starts from scratch without any legacy obligations. So obviously those, those make a major, major difference how to, uh, how to proceed. If, if I may, I could uh, address a couple of these countries with these different models, if that's, that's okay. So yes, for, yes, for instance, excellent. For instance, if we take FirstNet USA, there uh, we need to recognize that Spectrum traditionally is very, very expensive resource in the country. And we need to recognize also that in metropolitan areas, the current mobile networks are completely overloaded. So there's a great market for Spectrum. And with that, the US government was able to, to decide that uh, band 14 on 700 megahertz, as it was assigned to uh, FirstNet uh, agency, was a great asset to start building a, a cooperation and procurement for nationwide uh, uh, public safety network, utilizing primarily this dedicated spectrum, which then, then their partner uh, after the procurement AT&T is also allowed to use for their commercial users, but with lower priority. Then if we move on to, to another uh, country, uh, United Arab Emirates, NEDA there, they have obviously a very high risk, risk uh, uh, profile as one of the Gulf countries. From there, their national security point of view and for their economy, they need to make sure that, that whoever travels there, they are very dependent on tourism, uh, feels safe. So any investment in security is a good investment in the national prosperity. So they have decided to go completely dedicated. They have a dedicated spectrum, dedicated network, and even the term IoT, which in other pla places mean, means Internet of Things, is Intranet of Things in, over there. And then when we come to, to uh, Europe, I pick my own country, Finland, uh, in our case, the only spectrum which was coming available was uh, on the 700 megahertz uh, based on the digital dividend as, as the uh, analog TV moved over to, to digital TV. However, in our case, case as, as Russia is our neighbor, Russia continues to use the same spectrum for, for broadcasting, resulting that that particular spectrum is is, is interfered in large parts of the country. Uh, again, leading to situation that uh, it might not be the most suitable uh, spectrum be, to be used for, for critical communication, public safety, police, fire and ambulance and other, other critical infra, infra users. So as a result, the nation came together with the discussion with the mobile network operators, MNOs, and uh, an agreement was what's re reached with changes to legislation that uh, a chosen MNO will provide uh, public safety users critical communication broadband services, radio access services uh, on all their frequency bands with priority service. So, so there are quite many diff different models. Then in in UK. The service is basically completely outsourced to, to uh, EE uh, in the ESN network. So, as said, many models, many approaches, uh, quite dependent on the national drivers and the situation. When do we expect the phase out of Tetra model till like uh, 2030? Well, uh, in, in TCCA, we have made a, a roadmap on this broadband and transition. And, and there, uh, what we see, see as a key time zone 
is exactly the time we are living right now. Uh, the, how we call it, the window for transition opens by the technology maturity, which is happening right now as, as the 3GPP, uh, 4G, 5G standards are, are becoming mature and, and the implementations are, are, are coming to mar market. So that basically opens the possibility to start transforming to 4G, 5G, 5G technologies in larger scale. Then the other end of the window is the time, uh, especially in the Western European countries, when the, um, the technical lifetime of the existing Tetra networks, most of all the base stations, comes to, comes to end. And that is in many countries, is indeed in the end of this decade. So these countries are in a situation that either they manage to do the transition during this decade, or they have to reinvest in the existing technology, which probably is not the most, most lucrative thing to do. In, at the same time, if we look at the other, other sector aside of, the, of, of public safety, the uh, transport, uh, it is, is announced that GSMR technology, which is the European directive for uh, chosen technology for trains, international high-speed trains, that is becoming obsolete in the end of, end of this decade as well. So that is another sector that has a need to, to transform. But it's quite important to notice that this, uh, when we speak about this transition window, it's, it's on the practical side of the, of the nations. Now it's the time to make sure that the legislation is in place. It's time to make sure that the procurement uh, processes start running as it takes some time also for the organizations to do the transition. At the same time, those who have narrowband technology and are just happy with, with uh, mission critical voice and messaging, they can continue using Tetra technology certainly until 2050. No problem, it's not a technology issue here. The Digital Poland Foundation has recently published a report called how to effectively build 5G networks for the benefit of the entire society and country. And this is really a core question. So finally, uh, what main challenges can you name here? What is the critical uh, solution in safe transition to 5G? Well, uh, what we have recognized is, is basically three major cut categories, Techni technology, technical, challenges is obviously one one needs to make sure that uh, the coverage is there the the capacity is there the the availability reliability even in in instances of of power cuts is there uh, but i think that that's that's probably the easiest one i'm an engineer so i have great great faith in in the technology part the second one is is le legal and regulatory that the national legislation and regulations are in place to ensure that the, the user organizations are able to, to do this transition, where to transition to, to who is the operator, who, who, where do you, you uh, uh, store um, critical information, how, how it is shifted from organization to another. So regulatory and legal topics are, are quite important, especially as many times the legislation, legislative cycle is longer than one election cycle. So if one hasn't started yet, it's time to start in order to make sure that everything is in place before it needs to be taken into use. But then uh, still probably the greatest challenge we recognize it's actually with the user organizations themselves. So on one side it's easy for them because they can manage it, but at the same time it's the greatest challenge. The question is that can they, are they committed in, in moving, can they trust the network, have they done their share in updating their own operating procedures to take benefit of these, these technologies, these capabilities? Do they, they roll in the, uh, prepare to roll in the applications, do the training and all those relevant, relevant things. Those are the main three categories 
that need to be operated and, and worked in parallel. And that's uh, obviously something we in TCCA help help uh, globally uh, organizations to and uh, nations to move move forward with. Thank you very much. Teso Pesonan, Chairman, Critical Communications Broadband Group at TCCA and the Vice Chairman of the Executive Board of TCCA. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much and best of success for you. Thank you very much and of course same to you. Jeremy Andrzejkowski, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.